Well, it's that time of year again, but this time I have delved into the depths of Beta 2 to find every single new change and feature contained within this iOS release. Today I present to you over 120 new features and changes within iOS 17 Beta 2. And now the moment we've all been waiting for. iOS 17 Beta 1 will be on the left and iOS 17 Beta 2 on the right. In FaceTime, the user interface sits a bit higher here. Beta 2, you can see that there is no gap between the word FaceTime and the two buttons. In Beta 1, there was quite a large gap here. The second change in Beta 2 is that the FaceTime buttons have larger icons and the buttons themselves are actually slightly more rounded compared to Beta 1 where you can see the icons are a little bit smaller and there's less of a radius around the buttons. In my opinion, Beta 2 looks much nicer. So FaceTime's UI is also a little bit cleaner in Beta 2 than it is on Beta 1. So for example here you can see that the cells in Beta 2 are quite a bit taller than they were in Beta 1 and there are less lines separating each entry here. So you can see on Beta 1 here there is an extra line at the bottom of the last entry but on Beta 2 that no longer exists. I think it looks a lot better. Alright the next change has to do with the camera application. When taking a photo there are no longer haptics when using the camera level. Now I'm not sure I like this change because it was really nice to have. I didn't even have to really pay attention to how my phone was being held as the haptics would let me know when it was level. So I'm hoping that that comes back in a future beta. Alright, so in the clock application, the timer section now has a large header which looks a lot nicer. Beta 1 and earlier versions previously did not. Now you can see this follows the same language as the rest of the clock app, for example, World Clock here. So that is a new change. Now also in the timer section, the button design has been updated for cancel and start. They no longer have this extra circle around them, now it's just one solid circle. The example label for timer is now timer and is no longer label. And for timer recents, the actual recents header is now using a bolder font and it is no longer gray, it is now white. And for the timer history, you can see here that the timer length and title or length again is now grayed out instead of white so it's a little bit more discernible between that and an active timer. In the podcast app the podcast library icon has been changed it represents the podcasts a lot better in this case as it actually has the logo inside of it now previously it was just filled in gray. In settings in about this iOS version the text has been updated saying that iOS beta gives you an early preview of upcoming apps features and technology as well as information about not just the developer program but the normal Apple beta software program as well and of course previously it did not it just said that it contains bug fixes and improvements and it only gave you a link to the developer website. Now in this page you can also take and copy pretty much anything here if we bring up the copy option you can drag this pretty much wherever copy whatever you want you can see now I can copy the settings background in the haptic touch settings you now have the option for slow default and fast haptic touch Previously, it was only fast or slow. The default in iOS 17 Beta 2 is the same as the fast of Beta 1. For example, if I switch back to default, you can see here pressing and holding brings it up at pretty much the same time. Of course, if I choose fast here, then it is much quicker. When editing a lock screen now, both the depth effect and appearance toggles have new icons. So instead of just the three dot ellipse here, it is now the actual light slash dark mode icon which much better represents this option and for the depth effect it is now an icon that is filled in rather than empty. Now in beta 2 when enabling or disabling the wallpaper depth effect it actually comes up with a separate menu now where you can choose to either disable or enable the depth effect. Previously just tapping the button would enable or disable this effect. And now in beta 2, the bug where the appearance would not actually be selected, even though it would still apply the changes, has been fixed. You can see if I select dark mode here and then go back, automatic is still checked. In iOS beta 2, that has been fixed. If I check light here, you can see light is, is selected, check dark, and dark is selected. All right, so we got quite a few wallpaper changes here. So starting with the astronomy, the astronomy wallpapers now have updated thumbnail images. So you can see, for example, Mars here is completely different. They better represent the actual wallpaper themselves. So you can see this is what the wallpaper looks like. We go back out, you can see the thumbnail on beta one is quite different. So the next change has to do with the wallpaper backgrounds for the astronomy set. So for example here, Saturn has a different background. You can see on beta one, it had like this brownish look in the background. Now it does not, said it just has stars there. This is the same thing for several different wallpapers. A lot of them actually have more stars. For example, Mercury has uh, quite a few more stars. It is hard to tell on camera, but you can definitely see them down here. 
um, like right around this area and up there too. So that is definitely a nice change. On beta 2, the astronomy wallpapers actually sit a little bit lower than they did on beta 1. For example, you can see here I have one widget on both and the moon definitely sits noticeably lower than it did on beta 1. This is definitely a nice touch, especially for those that use widgets. So now in beta 2, when swiping through wallpapers, the time no longer disappears. So you can see on beta 1, it just kind of disappears and comes back. On beta 2, this does not happen. Now, also when swiping through wallpapers, you can see there's a new animation here. So for example, on beta 2, you can see with the Saturn wallpaper, it now has yellow text and a different font on, for the uh, clock. When swiping between, it has this nice new animation to change all of that. For example, the widgets fade to a different color. The clock just completely swipes away and another one comes in. Really nice. In beta 1, they don't even change. Uh, the only change that happens is that they disappear. The earth and moon wallpapers do cover the time once again. Let me just go ahead and remove these widgets here. And you can see that it now covers the time again. Previously in beta 1, it did not. The Kaleidoscope wallpaper thumbnails have actually been enlarged a little bit. You can see now that they're a little more zoomed in, look a lot more refined, a lot better. When we actually go into the Kaleidoscope wallpapers here, you can see that the wallpapers have been updated to reflect this change, and they're also a little bit more colorful too. The standby settings have been updated on beta 2. Now you have the option to show notifications while in standby, and the night mode has also been updated. Now you can open this into a separate menu here, and you have the option for to motion awake, which which when motion is detected by your iPhone, it will turn on the display. So this will be really helpful to many. Now in the system services location settings, there is an option for micro location that you can see right here. Previously that did not exist. In iOS 17 beta 2, there are fitness settings right below health. And if we tap into the fitness settings, you have options for live activity, cellular data, Siri search, notifications, and data related links. As expected, Apple has fixed the Apple Music settings crash. Previously in iOS 17 beta 1, when enabling crossfade, crossfade from settings, every time you'd open up the Apple Music settings, it would just crash. Now that has been fixed, so you can feel free to open this up. Now in beta 2, you do have custom crossfade, so you can adjust this from 1 second all the way to 12 seconds, similar to a Mac. Now in beta 2, there have been a lot of regroupings and rearrangements in the music section of settings, so it looks a lot nicer and it's much easier to find certain things. In the phone application in recents, you can now see that the height has been increased for all of your recents, so it looks a lot cleaner, definitely more spaced out. In the weather app in moon phases, the haptics have been updated on the slider here, so when you're sliding through the days, it no longer just has haptics on the little white dividers or the today dot. Now it has haptics all the way through for each little gray, white, and that blue dot. It is so much better, it feels so much more refined, and I personally love this change. Now the second change is that the date actually becomes white. So you can see that when I go to today, the current date is now white, and as soon as I slide in the past or in the, pre in the future, it goes back to being gray. Previously it did not, it just stayed gray the whole time through. And of course another change is now that the dates are abbreviated. So you can see here that it actually spells out the weekday or weekend, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Now it just is abbreviated so you can see Mon, Tu, and Wed. Now the today text is bolder, so if I jump over to the today text here, you can see that this is actually slightly bolder than it was previously. And of course the spacing in the slider has been condensed a lot and it looks so much better. The moon phase calendar has been condensed quite a bit. Previously in beta 1 it was a lot taller, now it is much shorter, it looks a lot better. The icons in the Moonface calendar have also been updated. They're a lot more gray now. Previously, they were all white. Now, About Geocentric Distance has been renamed to About Moon Distance. And to reflect that, there have been some text changes. In averages, the today's high is now in a fixed position in the top left corner of the graph. Previously, it would hover around the time of day. I do prefer this design a little bit better on beta 1, but this is more consistent with iOS, so it makes more sense. Now, you can also see that the normal range is a lot darker on beta 2 than it is on beta 1, so the today's range is a little bit more discernible, so definitely an improvement there. Now the years for summary and monthly averages have been changed, so currently they are 1970 for both, previously it was 1933, so just a minor update there. Now you can also see that there are now text under monthly averages that has been moved from below the graph to under the header. 
And now there is a completely redesigned monthly average graph. It looks a lot nicer, a lot better, and it's definitely more consistent with the iOS weather app. Now throughout the weather app, the options no longer say mirror system setting. Instead, they now say use system setting. So a minor change there. In the precipitation averages, now summary and monthly averages both say 1970 instead of 1933 like they did in beta 1. The monthly averages graph for precipitation also got a complete redesign. It looks a lot better, and of course, it's very consistent with the rest of iOS. The chance of rain graph has been renamed to chance of precipitation, and the actual graph is now much darker. It blends in a lot better with the background. Previously, it was slightly lighter. In beta 2, the wind and gusts information on the wind platter is slightly more spaced out. I'm not sure that this is a change I like. I think it looked better when it was more centered, but it is a change in beta 2. Now, the icon, the compass here, has actually shrunken down a little bit, so the platter is not as tall as it was previously. This is a change I like. I think it looks a lot better like this, but again, I'm not sure how I feel about this spacing here. When opening up Apple Books on beta 2, I was greeted with a splash screen. When viewing someone's contact, you now have updated buttons here, a little bit more refined, a little bit easier to see. Personally, I did kind of like the old ones better, but these are easier to see, so that is a welcome change probably for many. When adding a new contact, there is a new add photo button. Previously, it was just small blue text that read add photo, but now there is a proper button, much larger, it looks a lot nicer. Now when we go to add photo here, you can see that there's a new user interface where it no longer says choose your photo at the top, and it has a larger profile picture here. Now the contact photo editor actually has new icons. You can see here we have camera, photos, memoji, and monogram, all new icons for each of those. And of course we also have the option for emoji, which is brand new. In the contacts app in a user profile, you now have an updated and refined contact photo and poster cell with the actual profile picture next to it. And for example, contacts only below the title. At the top of somebody's contact, now there is a updated design here. So now the edit and back buttons are bolder, much easier to discern from the background. The profile picture and name are slightly larger than previously. The buttons are slightly bigger than before, and the background actually assumes a darker color than previously. We have new Apple Music widgets. So previously for recommendations in top charts, we only had the single large widgets. Now in beta 2, there is a medium recommendations widget. There is also a small and a medium top charts music widget. So this is definitely an improvement. So the third analog clock widget now has an updated thumbnail in the widget page. You can see it's kind of facing the opposite direction now. It has a little translucency to it as well. It looks really nice. Now it also has an updated design. It is translucent in itself, but it also has a dark mode variant now as well. Previously, it only had the light mode version. So definitely a nice improvement to this widget. In Spotlight Search, there is now an updated keyboard design. You can see it is a lot more translucent, a much brighter looking keyboard, a lot nicer as well. You can see here in Beta 1, it's much darker, and it looks a little harsh too, especially when you're going from this blurred background to the keyboard. So this blends in with the new search bar design much better. Now the emoji keyboard gets a new animation. So for example, in Beta 1, you can see here how it just kind of pops in and out. And in beta 2, if I can actually, there we go. In beta 2, there is now a new animation when opening the keyboard where it will slide in from the top and then slide back down. Much, much nicer. In the control center, they have updated the spacing of the toggles when wearing headphones. Previously in beta 1, this is what it looked like. In beta 2, the home controls in the control center now use lighter coloring, which looks so much better and it's easier to discern. For example, in beta 1, this is what it looked like, where it used all black for the text and the buttons. Even some of the icons here are darker. In beta 2, everything here is lighter and it looks a lot nicer. In beta 2, there is now a proper blur effect at the top here, as you can see, versus beta 1, where it just kind of had this gray overlay. Looks a lot cleaner on beta 2. In beta 2, the home screen wallpaper no longer flashes black at the bottom of the screen when unlocking your device. Previously, in beta 1, using the default iOS 17 wallpaper would have this like black flashing. The home screen wallpaper, that has been fixed in beta 2. On beta 2, the lock screen's now playing platter is slightly shorter than it was on beta 1. Now this isn't really a design change that I'm a huge fan of, but it is a change in beta 2. Now when airdropping content to another device, there is now a tutorial showing you how to use Nearby Share. 
The share sheet no longer shows the photo's location, instead it just says location is now included. Previously it would say the photo's location. When editing a photo, the buttons such as undo, redo, markup, and more are now sitting slightly lower. Previously they were riding right on the cancel and done buttons. In iOS 17 beta 2, you can now choose which messaging app you'd like to send a message to somebody with using Siri. Previously in iOS 17 beta 1, you could not do this. In beta 2, the icon as well as the font size for no automations is slightly smaller than that of the previous beta. And when adding a new automation, we now have information text as well as the ability to search for automations and a new header titled personal automation. Previously, it was a smaller header in the center of the top of the display that just said new automation. The transaction automation icon is brand new. It is a much nicer looking wallet that better represents Apple Wallet versus the old one, which was just a wallet logo that's black and white. The transaction automation menu has been redesigned. When has been re renamed to when I tap and the new automation text is gone from the top. There are a lot more options to choose from in a lot more categories than previous betas. In beta 2, when viewing all of your open tabs, Safari now no longer blurs the home screen wallpaper. Previously it looked like this, now it's just a slightly darkened version of your home screen wallpaper. This isn't a change that I'm sure I like. Now when using a profile, the corresponding icon will display at the bottom of the tab bar. Previously it just showed these three lines with the three dots next to them. And Safari now comes with a personal default profile. In iOS 17 beta 2, you can begin browsing in a private tab without unlocking private browsing. Previously, in order to start browsing, you would need to unlock first. Now, in beta 2, private browsing only locks when you've locked your device or closed Safari and reopened it. In the message check-in settings, share data is now just data, and there's updated about text. It said previously, if you do not respond when prompted during a check-in, current location and device details will be shared. Now it just says if you do not respond when prompted during a check-in, data will be shared. Current location only has been renamed to limited, and all locations visited has been renamed to full. Now there is new about text depending on your selection. For example, current location only would say only current location will be shared. Now with limited, it just says includes current location and details about battery and network signal for iPhone and Apple Watch. So it's a little more specific. I think that's an improvement. There is another text change in the messages settings for send and receive. Previously, it said messages use wireless data to send messages between Apple Watch, iPhone, iPad, and Mac. Now it's been shortened to iMessages use wireless data to send messages between Apple devices. In the announced notification settings, the text has been updated to suggest that you can now say this without saying Siri as well as Hey Siri. Previously, it just said Hey Siri. And for customized notifications in the messages notification settings, there is now an option for emergency contact alerts where you can now receive as critical alerts. You can now log mental well-being in the past. Previously, you could not. When you have no state of mind entries, the no entries text as well as the icon are now towards the top and no longer center. Previously, they were. And now there is a slight blue gradient on the background and it looks much more refined. When logging an emotion or mood, the icons are now gray and much smaller. Previously they were larger and off to the side, now they are next to either emotion or mood. The check mark is also much smaller and not as bold. Previously it was bolder and taller. And now when logging an emotion, you can choose a specific time. Previously you could not do this. On the home screen, the calendar widget uses a slightly larger font than previously. Reachability no longer takes the shape of the device and reachability no longer blurs the background wallpaper. When inviting somebody to iCloud family, the suggestions is now situated a lot higher than before. Previously, there was a pretty big gap here. In the app library, the home bar no longer appears with the keyboard, and you can now press anywhere in the empty space below the space bar to activate the cursor. Previously, you could not do this. And in beta 2, when searching for an app in the app library, the X button now has a new animation. Previously, it looked something like this. It would just appear and then go away. And in beta 2, it fades in and then fades out. So nice little refinements there. Love the attention to detail. In the widget menu, there is now more space between the top of the first widget and the plus and done buttons. Previously, they were pretty much right on them. In the tips app, when in the setup checklist menu, suggested now sits slightly higher than it did in the previous beta. In beta 1, you can see there's more spacing between. In beta 2, Apple has seemed to remove the dynamic wallpapers from the collections category. They're nowhere to be found on my iPhone 14 Pro Max or any other device that I've checked. So I'm not sure if this is a bug or if they are just going to keep these off of iOS from now on. But we'll see in a future beta whether or not they come back. 
Now in beta 2, when waiting for a live voicemail to initiate, there is now the text waiting letting you know that it hasn't begun yet. The screen time icon has been updated in settings. You can see beta 1, the old icon, beta 2, the slightly revised new icon. This better matches the new settings icon for screen time on the main page. Now the app and website activity also received a brand new app icon previously. It was this clock and now it is just a graph. App and website activities splash screen is updated with a brand new icon at the top. Previously it was just an hourglass, now it is a person with a more bold hourglass. In software update, the automatic updates and beta updates cells now have the chevrons back. Previously they were just gone, and now in beta 2 they have returned, indicating that there is another page. In beta 1, Safari had a plus button for the favorites category, that has since been removed. There is now a new tip in the Photos app when zooming in to crop a photo. It will appear right here, unfortunately I was unable to capture this, and it only appears once. As soon as you exit the photo, it doesn't come back, so you're going to have to take my word for this one. When screen distance warning is initiated, after moving your phone or iPad far enough back from your face, there is now a new checkmark animation. In the tr conversation translate menu, there is now a new microphone icon. Previously it was a solid light blue with a white microphone in the middle. Now it is a more translucent looking blue with a darker microphone in the middle. And finally, the language text that you have selected for the conversation mode is now black, where previously it showed up as a light blue. All right, and there you have it. That is every new change in feature in iOS 17 beta 2. Now I do plan on making more videos just like this in the future, so make sure to hit that subscribe button with notifications enabled so you're always up to date when those drop. Now of course this video took a really long time to make as I stated earlier in the video, so showing some love with a like and a comment would be really awesome. Anyways, that is all I have for you this time. I will see you all in the next one.